Welcome to another special edition of In the Labs with Todd. For this project, we want to show you how to make a small little wooden soldier. Now this is a two-sided job, and if you're not familiar with how to do that, there will be a link in the PDF file that you get with this project to help you with that. I'll kind of go over it really quickly when we talk about the software, but if you need a little more in-depth stuff, then I would go down the road of looking at the PDF. So let's take a look in the software and show you how I made this. When I started to think about designing this little wooden soldier, I needed to come up with a sketch that I could work from. So let's open up an existing file and let's open up wooden soldier design.crv. That's the CRV file. That means you can open this up in vCarve Desktop if you'd like or vCarve Pro, but it really was designed for me to get some models created in Aspire. So make sure you read and understand the warning here and we'll click OK. Now to start out with, I drew this very basic toy soldier look. And then I went ahead and made some quick edits to it. I rounded some of the corners down, made it fit a little bit better, added some cuffs. And then for my next set of edits, I went ahead and thought about how I was going to peg this together and then also created an outline or start form for a base. Now, once I was happy with all the proportions and the design looked nice, then I went ahead and took it apart and created this blowout of all of the different parts that I needed. So I have his torso front and or back. I've got his head. I'm going to use the same vectors for front and back. I've got his legs, his actual vectors I needed to model his feet, and then the base and his arms. Now, once I was done and happy with all that, I went ahead and moved on to an actual working file. Now that I had those basic sort of drawings, I had to go in and create an actual file to use to create the shapes for this. So I created the shapes in Aspire. So there is the cutfile.crv3d, that's the Aspire file. There is a, C, a .crv file there for desktop, for vCarve desktop and vCarve Pro users. It will take a little extra cleanup because of the way it works, but it, those files still do cut properly. Make sure you read and understand the notes that are here and press OK. Now these are the what I'm left with once I paste in my vectors from that design file. I've got these two rails and this cross section. These two rails to create the other part of my torso. Same with the head. There's two rails and this cross section to create the head front and back. I use the turn to create the arms, which is a pretty easy feature. It's right here. If you've never used it before, I really highly suggest giving it a shot. And then I went and created the legs using the two rail sweep and then a two rail sweep to create the feet. Now, if we have a look at our models, this is what I ended up with. Okay, you'll see that I used the cross section to sweep along those two rails and we end up having these shapes. Now, what I had to do in the end was squish these down slightly because they were a little too thick to fit inside of my material. So the end result is not a perfectly round wooden soldier. He's a kind of an oval shape, but it still looks fine in the end. Nothing to worry about. So let's have a look now at the actual rest of the layers that I have here. So we have the pins. These are the pins that I used here to make sure that I could fit everything into the back side of my torso. We have our 3D tabs to hold it in place. That's those right there. And we had to add in a plane adjustment because once we try and cut these legs and stuff, they actually, they're too thick to fit inside the material. So I had to actually move them inside of the material. And by using this plane adjustment, that's a positive plane on the front side and a negative plane on the back side, I could kind of push my arms and my legs through my material so I could cut them in the same piece of material I had these in, which was important. And then I have an actual zero plane here, which we can turn on and it's, it'll fit in there nicely. So let's have a look at the tool paths for the front of this, let's pin this down, take a look. And we have three tool paths for the front. There's the one for the dowel holes and there's a roughing and a finishing pass. If we preview those, this is what we have. Now I had to make a slight adjustment to the roughing pass. I need to give it a little bit more of an allowance. If we look at our roughing pass, you'll see that it's a 0 0.05 inch allowance. That's because of my tapered ball nose end mill. I had to make sure that I left enough material so that I wouldn't show any gouges in my 3D components and that worked out really well. So let's close that down and have a look at the back. Same thing with the back. I just copied my components over from the front to the back that I could reuse. I have my pins here. And then we also have the 3D tabs. And then we'll add in my plane adjustment. You'll notice that all of a sudden our legs are floating in space. That's because this is a negative plane adjustment and a positive plane adjustment on the other side, which makes it so that my feet fit with inside of my material without popping out the backside. 
We have a quick look at our tool pads. This is the one that I use to cut the holes in my waste board so I can do the two-sided flip. If you don't know much about that, there will be a link in the PDF for this project so you can get some more information on doing a double-sided job. This is the, the pockets for the sockets. So if we go ahead and preview that one, you'll see that those are the pockets so that I can fit my arms into the torso. And if we take a look at the post holes and then the posts, let's preview those two tool paths. So pretty self-explanatory. They leave me with some raised posts and they make it so that I can cut these little dowel holes or post holes in the backside. And we have another 3D roughing and a 3D finishing. I know that was a whirlwind tour of this, but in the end, this is what you should end up cutting and it should be pretty easy. Now let's just take a look and see, oh, before I move on, there's also one more file and that is a base file. If we take a look and we go file, open, and we have a quick peek at the base file. This is also a cut 2D, oh, sorry, um, VCarve desktop and pro and also an Aspire file. So we have some important notes and this is a very basic set of tool paths which will give you a base to put your toy soldier on. I would suggest, I use double-sided tape, that's why there isn't any tabs. I had a piece of maple laying around that I used for that, but you can use whatever piece of material you happen to have around. Just a set of profiles with the same end mill that I used before to do the roughing pass on my toy soldier. Okay, so let's go ahead, run off to the machine and have a look and see how this cuts. So I screwed my material down to the waste board and then I went ahead and ran the tool path to cut the peg holes for the dowels and I did the double-sided flip. As you can see here, we're doing the roughing pass with the quarter inch end mill. And this is done in multiple steps. That way we can remove the majority of the material before we go in with our tapered ball nose and do our finishing pass. I decided not to do the last pass profile on the different steps of the roughing pass. That way I'd save myself some time. Now this is the tapered bull nose going in and removing all of that extra material that we left behind to give us a nice finish in the end. And once we're all done cutting these, we need to take the board off our waste board and then machine the backside dowel holes into our waste board. That way when we, when we flip over our board, everything will line up perfectly. And in this case, the dowels were a little long, so they ended up peeking up through the top of my board. Now here we're actually cutting the sockets in for the arms and for the neck and the feet. Now what's really neat about this is as it's cutting you can start to see through the other side of the board and you can see your spoil board right through. Luckily I lined those pins up with the grain of the wood and that way they held really good. I was a bit nervous about the ones that were holding the head in but they seemed to hold really well so I was quite happy with that. You saw the tail end of us cutting the peg holes in the head and the body. And now we're doing the roughing pass on the 3D component. So then we can go back and do our finishing pass with that tapered bull nose again. When I pulled the board up, you could see right through it, and that was the plan. Popped out the dowels, and then I went on to cut out each part with a carpet knife that we had around. 
I test fitted the head together and the torso and the pins lined up perfectly with the holes and then went over to our belt sander and decided to clean up those parts just roughly. I just wanted them cleaned up enough so I could dry fit the soldier together once I had the head and the torso glued. I added a bit of glue with a paintbrush, fitted them up, and then I used some clamps to hold them together for a few minutes till the glue set. And then I had a chance to make sure that everything lined up right. And it was pretty close. I had to go back and do a little bit of fiddling with my knife again and a little more sanding, but in the end, everything really fit well together. I put on two coats of sand and sealer. I sanded in between the two coats and the finish was really good. This is me just putting a little bit of sand and sealer on the base. That was one of my favorite projects so far in this series. I really enjoyed making that. Even though it's a double-sided project and it's a bit more of a challenge to put together, I think you really enjoy making this. If you'd like to make your own, why don't you pop over to your VNCO account and download the free files. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and I can't wait to see you next year. Okay, so we hope that you enjoyed the Cloud Project for Christmas. And thank you for watching. And from all of us here at Vectric, we wish you a, a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.